Hello and welcome to this uh, physics class. In this class, in this lecture, in this video, we'll be looking at dimension analysis. Dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis. So, what is dimensional analysis? Dimensional analysis is just a way of trying to express the quantities, physical quantities in physics, derived quantities in physics, in terms of the three fundamental quantities such as a mass, length, and time. When you try to express physical quantities that we have in physics in terms of the three fundamental or basic quantities which are mass, length, and time, you are carrying out dimensional analysis. That is what I just have on the board there. Dimensional analysis is used to express physical quantities in terms of the first letters of the three common fundamental quantities, which are mass, capital M, length, capital L, and time, capital T. Okay, so with this now, what is the dimension of mass? The dimension of mass, the dimension of mass is uh, M. The dimension of um, length is L and the dimension of time is T. So mass M can be written as a, either this way or they can use square bracket. So the dimension can be written as the M, capital M without the square bracket or you make use of square bracket. Another one is that you can use, so with that, we're going to express length using square bracket and without square bracket here. So the dimension of time using square, without a square bracket is this, with square bracket is this one. So these are the dimension of mass, length, and time. So we're going to move forward right now to get the dimension of other quantities excluding mass, length and time, but they are going to be based on mass, length and time, okay? So we are going to move on now. So what is the dimension of um, distance? What is the dimension of distance? So we want to get the dimension of distance, dimension of um, displacement, dimension of area and the dimension of volume so we are going to start from simple to complex so solution what is the dimension of distance what is the dimension of distance so how can we express distance in terms of mass length and time Distance, looking at distance now, does distance have any relationship to mass? No, it doesn't have. Mass and distance are totally different. Okay, mass and distance are totally different. Does distance have any relationship with time? No. Mass, dimensionally, they are different. Distance and time are totally different. Their units are different. Now looking at uh, distance and length, is there any similarity? You can know that. You, you can measure length in meters, millimeter, feet, inches and the rest. Miles. Also you can actually equally measure distance in terms of miles, kilometer, meters, millimeter, centimeter and the rest. Their units of measurement of distance and length are same. They are similar. So we can actually say that distance is a kind of length. Distance and length are similar. So now, since the dimension of length is L and distance and length are actually similar quantities, so we can say the dimension of distance is L, which can be written this way or 
this way. So the dimension of distance is what? L. So we've done distance, we move to displacement. So displacement is the difference in distance when you move from one point to another one. The difference between point B, which you move to, and point A, where you started the movement, that is displacement. So displacement is actually a kind of distance, a sort of distance. And being a sort of distance, that means is a kind of length. So displacement too is L. The next one is area. So area. Area now. Area is similar to length, distance. The area of a square, the area of a cycle, the area of a rectangle. So let's look at the area of a a rectangle. For a rectangle, the area is equals to the length times the breadth. So the area is equal to what? Length times breadth. Length times breadth. Okay? Length times breadth gives you area for a rectangle. So how do you um, how do you get this thing? The dimension. Length is spelled out. So this is length, which is a our our breadth. Breadth is also a kind of distance, a kind of length. So this can be written as length times length gives you area. Length is length. Breadth is another type of length. So yeah, length is what? L, the dimension of length is L, and the dimension of this other length, which represents the breadth, is also L. So in this case, the dimension of area becomes L raised to power 2. L times L gives you L raised to power 2. So the dimension of area is L raised to power 2. So we're going to move on to the dimension of volume next. So, like I said, that we're moving on to the dimension of volume. But before we go, we did the area. We used a rectangle. How about if we use a circle, area of a circle? Well, we will still have arrived at the same answer. So try that. We will still have arrived at the same answer. Try. You can try that as an exercise. Fine the dimension for the area of a circle. So for the volume, volume, the dimension of volume, volume. So for, we'll take one shape. Let's take a cue board. The volume of a cue board is length times breadth times height. Length times breadth times height gives you the volume of a keyboard. Now this is length. This is breadth. Breadth is a kind of length. So we can replace breadth with length. Height is a kind of length. So we can repre replace height with length again. Now what is the dimension of length? L. Dimension of length which is the breadth. L again. Dimension of length, which is the height, L again. So at the end of the day, what is the dimension of volume? L times L times L, which is L raised to power 3. So this is the dimension of volume. Okay. So I believe you understand. We've done some simple ones right now. So there are a whole sh shapes that can give you. You can actually c find the volume. Volume of a cube volume of a sphere, volume of a cylinder, would they all arrive at L3? Yes. When you saw, it's going to, they will all give you L3. So you can try those ones. Try the volume of a cube, the volume of a sphere, the volume of a cylinder. 
and you discover that you're going to land at every spot three as a dimension of those shape. So we're, we're going to match on right right now. We're going to match on. So next, we are going to find one more more complex quantities. So like I said, we're going to move on to more complex dimensions or more complex physical quantities. We've done the, some very easy ones. So the next one we'll be looking at is the dimension of velocity. So we need to get the dimension of velocity. So for you to get the dimension of velocity, either if you know the unit of velocity, you can easily get the dimension. That is one. And always, if you know the formula that gives rise to velocity. So velocity can be defined as what? The rate of change of displacement. How displacement is changing with time. So that means velocity is actually equal to displacement all over time. And in the previous calculations we did, we said displacement is a kind of distance. We even worked it out that the dimension of displacement, which is a kind of distance, which is a kind of length, is actually L. Dimension of time is what? What is dimension of time? Dimension of time is a uh, T. So at the end of the day, this is L over T. L over T, this is the same thing as T raised to power 1. We want to take the denominator to the numerator. So this T is carrying one in the denominator. And based on the law of indices, when you have a power in the numerator, sorry, in the denominator, that is below, when you switch it up, it's going to, the sign is going to change. If it's positive here, which it is, plus one, when it goes up, it becomes minus one. If it is negative here, when it goes up, it becomes positive. So this is positive one. Although there was no one there, but there's an invisible one which should not be written down because it's one. So we have to put that one here. So when it goes up, it's going to become t raised to power minus one. So we have L t raised to power minus one. This is the dimension of velocity. Okay. So I'm not going to solve the dimension of speed. Do that, take that as a class exercise. Do that, please. So I move to the next one, acceleration. So how are we gonna get the dimension of acceleration? First and foremost, we need to get a formula that gives rise to acceleration. So what is acceleration? Acceleration is rate of change of velocity. Rate of what? Change of velocity. That's our velocity is changing with time. And from here, we've already gotten velocity as what? L T. So first of all, you will solve for velocity and get that velocity is equal to L T raised to power minus one. We're going to put that on top. L T raised to power minus one. And time is what? Time is T. So We've already solved that velocity here. That is why I'm not solving it again. But if you were to solve this from the scratch, this is how you solve for velocity. It's lost in your answer. Then time, the dimension of time is actually t. So we go ahead to simplify. We have L t raised to power minus 1 over t. It carries an invisible one. So we're going to take this t and bring it up so that t which is down here can match with T which is above up here. So what do we do? We bring it up. So let me just move over here. So I will have space. We have L T minus 1. When this T raised to power 1, when it goes up, it's going to become minus 1. So at the end of the day, we have L T minus 1, T minus 1. How does that work out? This is just bring the power together. Take one of the t. You have minus one, minus one. So at the end of the day, 
L T minus one minus one is going to give you what? Minus one minus one gives you minus two. So at the end of the day, let me rock this up. At the end of the day, the dimension of acceleration. The dimension of acceleration is L T T minus one minus one is T minus two is L T raised to power minus two. So this is the dimension of acceleration, which I believe is very very clear and simple. But in case you have any question, you can chat me up here via WhatsApp or in the comment section. Okay, so. With this, we're going to move on to the next one, which is actually a uh, density. So, like I said, densities, which formula con connects density? Density is equals to mass over volume. Density is equal to what? Mass over volume. And what is mass? Mass is in um, kilogram. Mass is in kilogram. I have volume. Sorry. <laughs> Let's. I'm not going to the units. I'm not going to make use of units. So mass already. The dimension of mass is m. And we've already done the sub the dimension of volume as what. Well. L raised to power 3 in this video in the earlier section we already saw for volume that the dimension of volume is L raised to power 3 so at the end of the day bring this up you're going to have M L raised to power minus 3 this is the dimension of density so the next one we are going to is force force is equals to what? What is the formula for mass times acceleration? Force is equals to mass times acceleration. Now the dimension of mass is capital M. What is the dimension of acceleration? Acceleration is a we've already solved it. Okay, this is it's still here on the board. It's L T raised to power minus 2 okay so it's LT raised to power minus 2 so when we measure everything we have for force we have MLT raised to power minus 2 this is the dimension of force okay so Dimensions are simple as this. So I can go ahead and solve more. Okay, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead at once. So next, what we have is momentum. Momentum. So momentum. What's the formula of momentum? Momentum is um, equals to the force times the perpendicular distance from the point of application of the force. So we have force times distance. Now, force which we just saw below, which I've just rubber, the dimension is m l t minus 2. If you were to solve this from scratch, the way I solve the force, you will solve the force slotted in here. Now, what is the dimension of distance? Distance is a kind of length. So the dimension is L. So you have M, L raised to power 1, which is invisible, T minus 2 times L raised to power 1. So you, you have M, L, 1 plus 1. This one plus this one. Then you have t raised to power minus 2. So you have ml. 1 plus 1 is what? 2. 
So you have T raised to the power minus 2. So it means the dimension of momentum. Okay? This is the dimension of momentum. So let's look at the next one, which is a work. What is the formula that connects work? Work is equal to force times distance. So what is going to be the, dis the this thing? The dimension of work. This is something you can easily guess. If you can guess very well, you discover that the formula connecting momentum was force times distance. So at the end of the day, when you solve the dimension of momentum, which is m l raised to power two t raised to power minus two, will be the same as the dimension of work. So I'm not going to solve that out. So the next one is um um. Sorry, this is not the dimension of momentum. I made a mistake. This is the dimension of movement. Movement, sorry, not momentum, movement. Movement is what? Force times perpendicular distance from the point of application of the force. So this is the dimension of movement, not momentum. I'm very, very sorry. Okay, so this is the dimension of momentum, which we saw. I mistakenly said it was uh, momentum. This is movement, the moment of a force. This is the dimension. So, dimension of movement and dimension of work are the same thing. So, the next one I'm going to solve right now is the dimension of momentum itself. The dimension of momentum itself. So, the dimension of momentum is actually equals to form, formula for momentum is mass times velocity and the dimension of mass is what? M. Dimension of velocity which we already saw before is LT raised to the power minus 1. So at the end of the day, when you measure everything, you have MLT raised to the power minus 1. So the last one there is dimension of weight. I'm going to leave this one as a class exercise for you. So you are going to find the dimension of weight. So with this right now, we have come to the end of our lesson for today. Finding the dimension of physical quantities. So in case you have any question or you need clarification anywhere, just chat me up either via WhatsApp or in the comment section. So thank you for joining us and don't fail to join us in the next lesson. So just like the video drop your comment and hit the subscribe button so that you always be notified whenever i upload a new video thank you so much and bye bye